So today we're taking a look at uh, what um, what's the cooling system for, and we got uh, Serenity's over here running. It's been running for a few minutes now, and so it's had a chance to warm up. Um, one of the things you have to remember with any internal combustion engine, you think about the word combustion, is it's basically that the engine is constantly on fire. Uh, inside the cylinders, um, the fuel is sprayed, atomizes, and then vaporizes, and the spark plug ignites that vapor. But only about 20% of the energy that is in a drop of gas is is what is moving you down the road. The rest of that energy, um, well, some of it's going to run the air conditioning, that's about 1%, um, charging the battery, running the electrical system, that's a, that's a few more percent. Um, but the vast majority of the energy that comes from a drop of gasoline is lost as heat. It's wasted, really. Um, a little heat is good. A little bit of heat is what the engine uses to, uh, like to say, to keep the oil uh, running, uh, circulating uh, effectively to protect moving parts. Uh, also helps inside the cylinders themselves to vaporize the fuel, and because it's fuel vapor that burns, not liquid fuel. So uh, the better you can vaporize the fuel with heat, um, the more efficient your car. Uh, on the other hand, too much heat is a bad thing. Uh, too much heat will take this oil and make it so thin that it, um, it can't um, lubricate effectively anymore. And then you end up with metal on metal contact and uh, ruining bearings and causing excessive wear um, and drastically shortening the life of the vehicle. Uh, so that is what the cooling system is for is not to freeze the engine, but to maintain a certain temperature. Now, if we go inside and uh, look at the, um, take a look at the gauge in general, in this case, um, you know, it's been running a few minutes, and um, anytime you see a gauge like this in a car, uh, you're, you're looking for the needle to be somewhere in the middle. Um, if it's down here towards the cold and it's been running for a few minutes, um, you might have a problem. If it's running up high, now, I mean, if it's running too cold, um, you know, you might have problems like poor fuel economy, poor for, poor performance, uh, but it probably won't ruin your engine. On the other hand, if it's running too hot, um, you do run the risk of, um, you can have metal warpage, you can have uh, plastic parts melting. Um, and of course, uh, uh, serious engine damage uh, due to lack of lubrication. So, what if uh, what if your engine is overheating? What could cause your engine to overheat? Um, so, a couple things. I'm going to shut this off, and then uh, take a look at a couple of things that you can check. Um, one of them is checking the coolant level. Now in this case, um, can't see it because it's in the shadow, but uh, the coolant overflow bottle, uh, in this case is up here. Uh, they, they can put them pretty much anywhere in the car. I mean, some I've seen, you know, up over here by the, by the, by the fender well. Um, <clears throat> uh, some of them are pressurized. In this case, um, it's not pressurized. This is uh, in case you need to add more. Um, but to make sure that you have enough because what happens is when the coolant expands or heats up it expands and this cap maintains a certain amount of pressure in the system um, anything over that pressure gets shunted to the overflow bottle now if if it's too low when when this system cools down again it contracts and so this tube here will pull coolant back into the radiator to take up the space. If it's too low, in if there's not enough coolant in the overflow bottle, it will suck air back into the um, into the radiator, and uh, air does uh, does not uh, absorb heat very well at all. And so, if you have an air pocket, now of course you know air will rise to the top of this. <clears throat> 
when um, when there's air in the system, the water pump is gonna is gonna pull it in. But if it's just pulling air, it's not doing anything, and you're getting no circulation at all, and that is going to overheat your engine very quickly. Uh, so first thing to check is check the overflow bottle, make sure that you have enough. Um, second thing to check is to make sure that your radiator cap is good. Now I'm not going to pull this radiator cap off because it's under pressure, and when the engine is hot, um, that can be very dangerous. You don't want to um, you don't want to spray yourself with um, <clears throat> with hot coolant and it's not not only that it's hot coolant yes it's this is probably about 240 degrees um, on the highway uh, right now probably somewhere around 200 degrees um, if you pull this off not only will you get uh, liquid heat you know hot liquid uh, it will it will really boil it will instantly vaporize so you will have a huge cloud of burning steam uh, which is not comfortable I can tell you um, and can actually cause uh, up to up to third degree burns um, because of the steam so don't don't try and pull this off when it's hot do that when it's cold when it's cooled off um, you want to take this off and turn it over and check the gaskets make sure that the gaskets are intact that they're not um, they're not swollen uh, sometimes you see the you see the gasket and it's you know it's supposed to be this size and it's like that size and it's it doesn't fit anymore and so of course it doesn't seal and that means that first it can't build that pressure and that pressure is what the key is to achieving such high temperatures in here is that under pressure it will not boil at 212 degrees it'll boil at 275 degrees but if it's not under pressure this will boil over very quickly and you will end up with vapor or air in the system which doesn't cool <clears throat> um, another common problem has to do with the cooling fans. Now, in this case, I have this uh, Serenity has electric cooling fans, which are powered by um, the temperature sensor in the engine. Uh, some will also have a temperature sensor in the radiator itself, <clears throat> and also will we'll have an input to control it when the air conditioner compressor is engaged it will automatically turn on the fans <clears throat> so um, you want to make sure one one quick tip off to um, overheating uh, when at a stop so if you're on the highway of course the movement of the car is going to be forcing air through the radiator but when you come to a stop it's the fans that are pulling the air through the radiator. If the fans aren't working and you come to a stop, you'll notice that the temperature will slowly begin to rise. If you're having a problem with the fans, uh, one of the things you can check, um, check your fuses and relays, uh, check the temperature sensor. Um, if it's happening with the air conditioning running, make sure that there, um, you'd have to check the uh, wiring diagram to see how the AC compressor uh, also engages the fan. Um, on some older vehicles where you had a belt driven fan, there would be a, a clutch that is engaged by, uh, by the temperature of the air hitting it. Um, and, and they don't last forever. They will, the, um, the clutch will eventually wear out or leak. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a silicone uh, lubricant that is inside it that engages and disengages the clutch and at a stop if that clutch is uh, is disengaged it's not going to be pulling the air through the radiator to cool it off um, last but not least of course is the the crux of the whole matter is what maintains the temperature itself is the thermostat which at this angle I can't I can't point it out to you um, on serenity on this uh, H4 engine this hose down on the bottom here goes to an elbow and in that elbow is a thermostat that is um, it's a valve it's a temperature actuated valve so that when the temperature is below a certain point the valve closes preventing the flow of coolant and then as the engine heats up As the engine heats up, that valve slowly opens and 
allows the coolant to flow. And because the, because the temperature sensing bulb is in the coolant flow, uh, it's constantly adjusting depending on, uh, depending on how hot the coolant is and cold the coolant is. Um, thermostats also do not last forever. Um, they can break because uh, they are under constant spring tension. The valve is held, is held closed by a spring and is pushed open by a, um, it's a, it's a bulb of wax that expands when it gets hot. So it's constantly expanding and contracting to control the flow of coolant. Um, so if it breaks, um, usually what will happen is it can break the spring and you might have, uh, this would not be an overheat problem, it would be an underheat problem uh, because it'll stay open all the time. On the other hand, if the bulb leaks, the, um, it, it will never push the valve open and then, um, and then the engine will just keep generating heat, but because the coolant is not flowing, it will not, um, it, it will not cool off. Um, and that's about it. So if you have an engine overheat problem, um, just to recap, uh, you want to check um, check your coolant level, check the fans to see if they're functional, check the radiator cap to see if it is um, sealing well, and if all else fails, uh, you may have to uh, take out the thermostat, which requires um, checking uh, which will require that you drain the coolant out and is uh, is a bit of a mess but um, definitely worth looking at if you've ruled out any other problems. I hope that this was helpful and um, you have a good day.